Welcome to today's 3D Print. Today we're going to talk about a question somebody had on Facebook, and I'm going to show him how to do it in Tinkercad. So he is making a, um, he wants an object to be round on the corners, and there are multiple ways to do that. And you could do this for making holes or for making the object. Um, I'm guessing he wants to make the hole in this space object the same shape as this. There are ways to do that. You basically have to make this and then you can use it to make a hole in that. But it's pretty easy. So stay tuned as we do a little tip in Tinkercad. So here we are in Tinkercad. Um, the most basic way to do this if dimensions aren't ultra critical. So for example, we're going to lay down a base object like this. It always defaults to red, and red is the worst possible color it can use because it does not display properly on the screen. Okay, so now we're going to put another square through it, and this is going to be our pipe, metal pipe, and we're going to cut right through that object there. Now there's actually a simple way you can do this right in Tinkercad if you don't need tight tolerances of you know, if you don't have to have a particular radius, you actually have an object here called radius. And you can change that and actually add curves to the edges of your object. Now, increase the number of steps to increase the resolution. And you now see I have a curved pipe. Now, we don't want the ends of this to be curved. That's actually pretty easy to fix. So you bring your pipe over here. All right, and you put a box underneath it like that. Duplicate that box. Bring the box just above it and erase all this. Join those three pieces together. And now I have a cross section that's square, that's where the ends are square. But I have my radius curves in my object. And that's really all you need to do. Now, if I were to make a, a pipe, for example, to cut through this, all right, first thing I'm going to do is do a Control D to duplicate it, change it to a different color, because of course it always defaults to red. And then I'm going to add a 0.2 millimeter tolerance on to this object to, to be able to print it and make it fit in a hole. So 20.02 and 20.02, okay. We then slide that through the object, turn it into a hole, shift, select the base plate, merge them together. And now we have a hole that this pipe will fit in. Now, if you have a very, very specific radius that you need, there are other ways to do it. Um, you're going to want to make sure snap grid is turned on at whatever resolution you need. So if you have one millimeter accuracy, you're going to want to make sure you make everything at millimeter accuracy so that you can snap it to a grid. Now the way you'll do that here is you would create a cylinder, give the maximum number of sides. Now what radius do you need for the corner? If I need a 5 millimeter radius, for example, that means I need a 10 millimeter circle. So this is 20. We're going to change this to 10. Okay. Control D. Now I want to move this left and right. There are two different ways you can do this. Um, the... Um, um, easiest way is to, what size box do you want? So let's say you want a, a square tube that's 30 by 30 millimeters, and you want that square tube to be um, 5 millimeter radius. So we need to move this edge 30 millimeters from this edge. So I can take this, hold down the shift key, and I can now move this. I can let everything go as long as I don't touch anything, and I have this position marker here where I can move this. Now, what does it use? I'm not sure what it actually uses. Let's find out. 
I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put down a square. We're going to make that square smaller so it's not in our way. But also a little tip, um, if you want to change the shape of an object in a particular direction, um, touch the control corner where you want it to move. So if I touch this control corner and I make this 30, it's going to expand to the right. All right, so here's our approximately 30 millimeters. Well, that's exactly 30 millimeters. Shift, drag, left, and how far? Probably, was it 20? Yep, it's 20. Okay. So this is going from center point. Um, you're moving from center point to center point of the cylinder. They're 20 millimeters apart. It's a 10 millimeter cylinder. So you have a five millimeter radius extending outward. So five plus 20 plus five, there's your 30. Okay. Now I could do the exact same thing going this way. I'm going to select um, control, select both of the cylinders. Come on. Maybe it's shift. Yeah, it's shift. Sorry. Now I have both cylinders selected. I'm going to control D again. That is a duplicate. So I'm telling you to give me a copy of those two cylinders. Hold shift again, drag to the right to lock it on this plane, and we're going to go to negative 20. There we go. There. Now we have these um, cylinders are forming the wall of our object. To keep things clean, I am now going to join these cylinders together into one object. This way they can't move relative to each other. So now if I move one of these, they all move. Let me get this out of our way. So now I've created my 5 millimeter radius, and I've created the skeleton for my, um, my box. What I'm going to do here is create a 20 by 20 box. Because I know the center points. No, I'm sorry. No, that's wrong. We're going to need two boxes. Okay? We need 20 by 30. So this way is going to be 20. This way is going to be 30. And then I need to duplicate this and rotate it 90 degrees. Now I need to center everything. If you are good with CAD, if you're good with drafting and you know, geometry, you know what I'm doing. Center, center, there. Now these boxes all line up together. Now all I have to do is select the boxes and make them 20 millimeters tall like these cylinders are. There. Join everything together. And I now have a 30 by 30 round corner pipe with a five millimeter radius and it's that simple this is now a single object i can extend this make it whatever shape i want if you're going to do a lot of manipulations using this tube um, download this as a file delete it and then re-upload it because every time i duplicate this it duplicates everything so i can break that apart and it becomes those separate objects again just like this one can be broken apart into separate objects. As you get more and more complex objects, that can become a problem as it tries to remember every single thing you did to these objects. So by joining them together, download, delete, and re-upload, you get rid of all that history, and you now have your base shape. You know, I would call this 30 millimeter square tube, five millimeter corner. And if you want to create a hole in the center, you can either change the shape of this, or you can create the explicit exact dimensional hole that you want in the middle you can even put a circular hole in the middle so let's say i want a 15 millimeter hole in the middle of this or yeah 20 millimeter it's fine i'm going to bring that down increase the number of sides come on and then i can put a hole right in the middle of this you know again just select them both center i nailed it got it centered make sure it extends out the top and the bottom and now you can join them and make a hole. So now I have a circular hole inside of a 30 millimeter square tube with five millimeter radius corners. And that's how you do that. It's very easy. As long as you as long as you punch in the numbers and you use the movement um, dimensions, you keep them all locked to that snap grid. You won't get any extraneous lines. It'll be a perfect shape like this here. You know, it won't have any weird um, artifacts on it or anything like that. You see, it's perfectly smooth. You can't see the lines where the, the tangent of the circle meets the face of the rectangle that we use to create that. 
but that's how you create that and then you can use this you know without the hole in the middle so control d see how it duplicates all of the previous motions that could become a problem later in time so let's separate this get rid of the cylinder in the middle and i can now use this to put a hole in this push it through turn it into a hole join it and i now have a hole in there but don't forget increase the size of that part 0.2 and 0.2 millimeters that's your tolerance so to do that again you see it's recreating all the steps that were used to create that which can become a problem over time so 30.2 30.1 um i'm sorry 30.2 that gives you a 0.1 millimeter tolerance on all four faces, which most 3D printers are capable of printing to that kind of tolerance. A little tiny bit of sandpaper takes care of whatever's left over. Um, you can adjust this based on whatever variance you decide you need. But now, when I join this, when I print this part and I print this part, this part will now fit inside that hole without a problem. But there you go. That's it. It's, it's that simple. It's not very hard. Um, you, you can do very complicated things in Tinkercad, and it does get a little complicated. But as long as you keep it straight in your head, like if I have this basic shape and I decide I might want to come back and modify this basic shape later, what I'll do is I'll control D it. Now I have two. So now I can take this one here and put it back here out of the way. So that if I totally bork this, I can back up back to this by simply deleting this. And what I'll do is, if I do a couple more steps and I like those steps, I'll duplicate it again and put it here. And I'll duplicate it again. And I'll keep myself a little, like, think of it as save points in a video game. So I'll create myself little save points in the game. And if I get ultra complicated, I'll even take my final object, like I'll grab this, and I'll copy it. You hit this copy command right here. I'll click on the Tinkercad symbol, open up a new workplace, you know, a new workspace, and then hit the paste key. And this way, that new workspace doesn't have all of this that it has to keep track of in the background. Um, that's it. It's pretty simple, not hard. So you can either use the um, built-in radius tool if you just if you if you don't if if dimensions aren't important and you just need a square tube to have round corners. Uh, you can do that using the radius tool that's built into the program. Um, so when you bring an object in, make it tall, increase the number of steps, and then increase the radius until you get whatever curve you want. And then just chop off a nice chunk of the top and bottom so that you end up with a nice square top and bottom. Because if you notice, it rounds the top corner too. Okay. This is also good if you want a nice, neat, little rounded top for the top of one of your models. And you can also change how much this curve works by changing the height. So if you change the height closer to a square, you'll see here you're getting a nice, clean, a much cleaner square. Okay, You can then take another square, grab it, and chop right through this object. So let's say I want to grab that. Okay. I can now save that or you know merge that. And now I have that nice little shape. And I can put that onto another shape. So for example, if I want to do you know a square box like this, and I want this to sit on top of it, and of course it's red, so we can't see a damn thing. I wish it did not default to red, okay? So now I can well, put that on top of that. I drop my work plane on top of here. I then grab this and move it up, and just here's my height above work plane. That's not above the ground. That's above work plane. Zero. There. And now I can center it if I want. Center, center, and then join them. And I, if I want to, I can also put a radius on this. I can also stick a radius on that too and create this little double radius type setup. Okay? If your base is thick enough, you don't even have to do this. 
you could just not do that. You got to click off and then click on. You could just embed this in here like that. You know, and as long as nothing sticks out, you can just join those together like that too. There you go. Now they're joined together as one. Then put your work plane back down here, and there's your object. So there's different ways that you can put radiuses on objects like that. I believe you can do that to other shapes. Uh, you could do a bevel, but not a radius. So, yeah, see, I can create a nice jewel-like bevel on the top and bottom. And of course, you can't see that because it's a horrible color. There we go. Default to gray, Tinkercad. Default to gray. Or one of the light pastel colors where it's easier to see these edges. So you can control how many sides. So you can create, you know, you want to create a pentagon shape, hexagon, septagon, octagon, etc. Dodecahedron, whatever. You can go up to 12 sides. And um, you can add a bevel to that edge. And you can also control that bevel. So let's say I want that bevel to be nice and deep, but I don't want it to be that tall. All I got to do is change the height. See how the bevel's flattening out? And then you chop off. But let's say I want the bevel to be this flat, but I want it to be this tall. Well, that's easy. Control D. Control D. Now I've created three of them. I move this one to the height that I want. I turn off the bevel on this one. Okay. And I use this one to overlap the two of them. There we go. There. Now I have my custom bevel height and depth on both sides, and I just join it all together. So that's how you can make your custom shapes um, for other polygons as well. Uh, that's it. If you have any questions, ask down below. I will do my best to answer them.